but we're going to watch Why I Left TYT by former TYT member Ben Carollo. Let's do it. Here we go. Here's the video. Why I Left TYT. This dropped one day ago. And the description is as such. Over the past several months, Anna Kasparian and Cenk Uyghur have taken increasingly transphobic stances, especially regarding trans women in sports, but also more generally when it comes to trans youth getting access to gender-affirming care. They have begun to lash out at anyone that calls them out on where they are wrong and have basically refused to learn. Recently, Anna went so far as to defend Jesse Singal, who is very well known as a transphobe. Let's watch it. Let's do it. Let's fucking do it. All right, so in case it wasn't obvious from the title of this video, I'm done with TYT. Now, before we get into, like, everything about this, this isn't about all of the hosts. There are Benny uses she, her pronouns. All right, good to know. Actually, a ton of people at TYT. That I think Wait a second. Wait a minute. I know Benny. I didn't know this was the same. Wait, is this the same Benny from... Oh, my God, it is. This is the Benny... That I follow, that I followed independently, on on uh, Blue Sky, and I didn't know this was the same Benny. Wow. All right. Let's do it. Let's do this. Let's do this. Genuinely cool people. This is mostly about Jenk and Anna, but of course, since like they're the people that are like the big names on the network, and Jenk kind of like owns the company, it's a pretty big deal when they do something like. I don't know, become incredibly transphobic and start what appears to be a ridiculous right-wing grift. I mean, literally everything from the things that they said about homeless people to the stuff that they said about abolitionists and their general sort of like refusal to hear the people that are criticizing them and saying, no, this is what people are actually trying to say. Uh, you're not really hearing what we're saying or you're, you're not listening. Now, we're not going to focus on literally all of the right-wing things that they've been doing lately, especially in the past year. They've done this pivot where they go after prison abolitionists, people who say defund the police, homeless people, and anybody that they think is a radical left. Because, you know, doing the enlightened the centrist thing is really a smart move in this year 2023. Right, I still got that calendar right. Uh, no, we're mostly gonna be focusing on their transphobia, which they have been escalating rapidly, which I guess is something that everybody really predicted would happen starting, I think about- Okay, small hot take. Okay, real quick, everybody. I think that we should stop using the term transphobia. I think that we should stop using the term transphobia and we should pivot completely. Just, if I could send out a message to all other trans people using the trans neural net, which definitely exists, the psychic link between all trans people, I would like people to adopt anti-trans and trans hate instead of transphobic. Because um, the truth is that a lot of it isn't strictly transphobic. It's actually just anti-trans. It's just they are anti-trans. They're not even, they're not engaging in, in just phobia anymore. They are explicitly opposing. A lot of people are explicitly opposing the advancement of trans rights. They are anti-trans. Transphobia is like um, when a movie has a scene where they go, do you think she's got a dick, bro? That's transphobic. It's this idea that there's something scary and dangerous about trans people. Um, transphobia is uh, implying that all trans people are groomers, but the way that that is definitely transphobic, but it goes far beyond that because it's part of an agenda to strip the human rights and the ability to exist publicly of trans people. So I think we should move to saying anti-trans and trans hate. I just genuinely believe that. I think that would be stronger, especially because it will completely fry the brains of people who are like, you called me a transphobe and my career was ruined, even though I'm still bringing in tens of thousands of dollars personally a month, my career has been ruined. That's what I would like. I would like people to stop using transphobia and instead say anti-trans, uh, or or uh, or trans hate because it is it's more than that 
I know I know why people use it, and I don't think that the term is necessarily inaccurate. I just think that it's been memed to death, and that we've we've like people have they are like I was called a transphobe. They'll say they were called a transphobe even when you're not called a transphobe. I mean, you guys know some famous incidents in my own history where I explicitly went out of my way not to call someone a transphobe, and they still said that I called them a transphobe, um, which is really funny. Um, but yeah. Yeah. But a lot of this is is beyond transphobia. It's not just transphobia. It's it it goes into being actually anti-trans people. Uh it goes into being act actively hateful of trans people. Let's continue. About six months ago, four months ago, when Anna Kasparian put out a tweet complaining about the use of the term birthing person, which is really, really funny because she kept on talking about how like it erases women and it, it just, it minimizes womanhood down to just body parts, except for it literally doesn't. Everybody very immediately pointed out that that's a silly thing to say that in fact, thinking that the term woman and birthing person are completely interchangeable actually does reduce women to body parts. And what- That was the point I was making in my video. That was the point I was making in my video when I said that actually what Anna is doing is worse. Anna is implying that the, that being a birthing person ne necessarily means you're a woman, that her argument is the argument that she's actually mad at, but she's pretending to be mad at the other argument. A genuinely, uh, just a stupid, God, it's so stupid. Let's continue. Precipitated this is even more silly because it was originally in reference to AOC and other politicians using the term when they're talking about abortion rights. And I don't know if you know this, but abortion rights are pretty specific to people with uteruses who are capable of having children. And so the term birthing person is a pretty useful term to be narrow enough to be specific, but also cover all of the relevant people. And that's why politicians have been using it in that context. Since posting the original tweet, literally it seems like they keep going back and forth whenever they hear that argument. Basically, if there's somebody reasonable in the room with them saying why the term birthing person might be used then they're like yeah i guess it makes sense of that context but i just don't like it uh but when somebody reasonable isn't around then they just go and complain about the term birthing person again and that really is why so many people predicted that they were going to go into this extreme turf pipeline because of course that's a very common starting point right there. The trans people are erasing women. Oh my God. But then everything escalated when they decided to talk about trans people in sports, which is a very common thing that a lot of cisgender people like to complain about because they don't understand how hormones work. And instead of attempting to try and get any type of understanding, they just want to sit and argue about their assumptions about how they think hormones should work. They come in with all of these assumptions about biological males and think that there's yep. some sort of mad literally all misinformed uh, assumptions that's all that it is it's all just gut feelings they don't ever actually look at the science they never actually care about the science and they never actually care about women's sports they don't give a shit about any of it if they did they would actually look into it and discover it's not a fucking big deal and in fact most major sports organi organizations already dealt with it and had rules for it that were totally reasonable secret advantage that just exists persistently regardless as to what hormones are literally dictating what your body is doing at the time and that's marinara says i think anna resents that the existence of trans people makes her feel insecure and defensive about her own view of her of her womanhood i think that's possible but i also think that anna kasparian is just it be, has become a spiteful person and that uh she realizes she can make a ton of money uh, by pitching to turf audiences, by, thro un by throwing uh, a minority under the bus that she doesn't particularly care about because she's mad that some of them owned her on Twitter. That's, that's my, my read of it. I don't know if there's any sort of deep-seated thing there. I just think that Anna Kasparian has realized that she doesn't particularly care about trans people that much, that she's mad that a bunch of trans people roasted her on the internet, and so she decided, well, well fuck you then. I'm going to make a bunch of money fucking you over. Fuck you. Look at me. What, look what I can do. It's, it's, a spite, it's a spite position that lots of people in power with, which is, it is true. By comparison to the people that she's mad at, she has a whole lot more power.
She's a producer at a well-recognized media company, media corporation. So I just think it's that. That's my guess. That's where I came in, and I started uh, tweeting at some of the hosts, saying that, hey, you're wrong about this, that, or the other thing. You're missing these details. Hey, you are literally just being transphobic right now. I even reached out to people within the network to say, like, hey, I would like to maybe sit down with Jenk and maybe even have an on-the-air conversation where I could talk about how all of this stuff actually works. You know, I may not be a doctor, but I like to think that in my master's degree in biotechnology and my experience literally being a trans person who, by the way, most trans people will do a ton of research about hormones before they get on them because a lot. So much. I can't even tell you. Researching hormones was like a full time job before I transitioned. It's like all I did. A lot of doctors don't really know that much about it so that's actually something that i did where i spent a ton of time like reading through like research papers about what would be like the chandra says i think that your read of anna is a fair read i've watched anna kasparian for a long time and she's gotten very burned out over the past couple of years and then and then seems to have become very spiteful yeah i i read it as a fuck you uh i can do this and you pissed me off and i don't care about you that much and so i'm gonna just bat to the turf audience i'll just bat to the anti-trans audience because it's easy and an easy way to make a quick buck what 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 a great way to get revenge spitefully on people who've pissed you off than ruining their lives it's spite spite fueled mentality is uh by the way i make references this, to this all the time but becoming a spite fueled person is a is a, a form of hollowing i know nerd shit warning bing bing warning nerd shit incoming there's a video game series called dark souls made by the incredible studio FromSoft. and in uh dark souls there's this concept called hollowing and it's basically when uh someone loses grasp on their humanity once and for all they become a uh a a a ghost like a zombie like creature and often hollowing is the result of uh of losing the things that would otherwise make you human um you know becoming so obsessed with revenge that you lose sight of everything else and so you become a monster that is only obsessed with revenge being becoming completely compromised by greed such that you you become a big uh, a, a gold covered zombie but there's nothing inside of you anymore because your soul was let go in in pursuit of this one obsession sometimes it's just giving up completely and fainting into into a complete despondency a corpse-like despondency and i unironically believe that becoming a fully spite-fueled person is a form of real world hollowing i think that when you when you become so angry and hateful and lost within yourself that the only thing that fuels your actions is spite um that you you just eventually lose all, all of, of you that ever existed. And that's what it seems like here. Because I've noticed that people who become primarily spite-fueled uh, end up debasing themselves, like we saw Anna Kasparian doing today on social media and uh, the other day on this idiotic podcast, uh, where she's just saying all the right points, despite the fact that all of us here, all of the people watching my show right now, we all know Anna Kasparian's history that it's not like she was like, oh, I'm not a leftist. Like, Anna Kasparian has been loud about being a progressive, about being a progressive voice. Anna Kasparian has been engaged actively, vocally, openly in building a leftist project for a long time. And now all of a sudden is pretending that she's politically homeless because one disagreement happened? Sorry. I just, it look, sounds like hollowing to me. That's hollow behavior. Spite-fueled hollow behavior. That's all it is. Yep. Let's go. Let's continue. Best for my transition, how it go, and things like that. So I like to think with my background, with some experience in biology, and, you know, reading a ton about how specifically hormone replacement therapy works for trans women like myself, I might know a thing or two about all of these things. And I figured, hey, if Jank doesn't know about this, maybe it'd be interesting for him to learn. But with that though, he wasn't really interested in having an on-the-air conversation because 
you know. He seemed pretty intent on not changing his mind, but he was open to having a phone conversation. So I handed to him on that, like, yeah, great. So we had a chat over the phone. Now, obviously, I'm not going to get into the details of literally every single thing that we talked about. I'm just going to give you a brief synopsis because that's really all that's important. And there are two main sticking points that I really want to touch on that happened within that phone call that I think were really a sign of like how far things were going to go and honestly how much further things might go from here still. The first sticking point was Jenk seemed convinced of this idea that I'm living in some sort of bubble. They've even said it on the air. The people fighting for- Anna just brought that up in her video like 14 times about this living in a bubble. Imagine, imagine telling a trans person, a, a heavily politically engaged trans person who is reaching out to you to try and inform you about their experience during one of the most, uh, one of the most unbelievably unprecedented, uh, 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 you know, anti-trans moments in the history of this country. A, a moment where an entire wing of the political branch is daily obsessing around trans people, targeting them, slandering them, calling them dangerous to children. The amount of trans hate and anti-trans sentiment on display is constant. Imagine all of that and telling that person that they're in a bubble. That's off the cuff. But again, I wish I could say that it's not what I what what I've come to expect, but from a lot of people, specifically uh, uh, liberal liberals who would like to think themselves lefties. It's uh, unfortunate. It's really unfortunate. Piftle Cakes with a tier three sub, been listening at wor work, but thank but finally escaped capitalist hell and made it to chat. Welcome and thank you very much for supporting the show. Seriously. All of you out there who've been listening to this long segment uh, while I die in the sweltering heat of the studio, please consider supporting the show, first of all, by pressing like on the video below. I mean it, your likes. We have 616 viewers today. That's banger. Those are, that's, uh, that, this show is growing so much and your likes make sure that we get out to even more. So please make sure you press like. And secondly, consider throwing a few dollars uh, via my website, demonmama.com forward slash donate or forward slash subscribe if you want the fancy emotes or throwing a super chat my way. It means the world to me. I am a small show, a very small show with a small team of people who do my editing, thumbnails, etc. cetera. So uh, please consider supporting my tiny, my, my, my tiny show as we grow and uh, keep you entertained even when it's really, really hot. <laughs> we recently hit 25K too, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. That's a big deal. Anyway, let's continue. Just wanted to do a little shout out as we have to do. Let's continue with the coverage. And thanks for being here. Trans rights are all living in some sort of bubble. The problem with that is I have a lot of Welcome, random Straw trans Hat people Monty. from a ton of different political perspectives that will like reach out to me about like, hey, how are things going at TYT? Or hey, you're really inspiring. You know, stuff like that. And I also have like a decent circle of friends and family, many of which who are sort of all over. Thank you very much, Gay Aaron 13 with a $5 donation. Deeply appreciate that over the place politically. I told Jenk very specifically, you know I have friends that are like big Joe Biden fans, right? Like they are theoretically to your political right. His reaction to that was quite literally laughter, which I just thought was like so hilarious. And he just kind of wouldn't believe. He was like, no, 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 you're, you're in a bubble, you're in a bubble. And I kept pressing, I was like, no, Jenk, you don't understand. I matched with a random person on Tinder, and the first thing that they started talking to me about is how transphobic TYT has been lately. Because I think that they had just kind of figured out who I was. And Jenk was like, no, no, see, you're living in a bubble. And it's like, yeah, okay, buddy, that completely random person. Thank you very much for the $5 super chat from Phoenix Wildfire. Phoenix Wildfire says, I'm just so tired of all of this anti-trans BS. Changing my pronouns did not turn me into a bad person. It just made me less suicidal. All solidarity to you. Thank you for supporting the show. Remember, this anti-trans period of history will end. We will fight through it, and I like to believe that we will come out victorious because there are a lot of us using our voice to fight back. And you know what? There's a lot of us calling out bullshit like what uh, what Anna Kasparian has been spouting about trans people recently. There's a lot of people pushing back on that, and I like to think that if we 
keep our minds together. We stand in solidarity that we will actually be able to overcome this. that I matched with on Tinder is just part of the bubble that I'm magically living in. But really that kind of gave me the vibe of like, oh, Jenk really thinks that like every trans person is part of some sort of ideology, that we're of like a strict like political viewpoint um, and that we don't just exist as like a type of person that exists, you know? It really did seem like Jenk was of the mind that to be transgender is to subscribe to a very specific political viewpoint, which... Hmm. You know how many minority groups get that treatment? Basically every single minority group gets that treatment. You get stereotyped that every, every person in X minority group has the same exact political view, even when it's blatantly obvious that that's not the case. And it also, it literally is also the trans ideology bullshit. It's basically claiming that there's like a single belief system that unites all trans people, despite the fact that we very obviously couldn't be more different politically from one another. No one in, in fights among trans people like trans people in fight among trans people. It's just how it goes. Yes, and it's also literally, yes, as Brim points out, this reminds me a lot of the cultural Bolshevism shit that the Nazis said about Jewish people and how they all wanted to destroy their Aryan society. It's the same thing. It's the same old song and dance. There's a reason why I have constantly on this channel brought attention to the similarities and the solidarity that can be found between the trans community, the Jewish community, and the overlap therein. The history of the Jewish community and the history of the trans community are inextricably linked. There, we have so much, so much in common, so much in common. And the gender ideology is just the same thing. It's the it's the it's cultural Bolshevism uh, uh, reworked. I don't know if you know that. By the way, thank you to the brand new uh, chunky imp member Adrienne Vixen. Thank you so very much for joining at such a high tier. Thank you so much. This. But that's actually something that the, like, most unhinged transphobes are, like, spewing as conspiracy theories and stuff like that. They're like, these trans rights activists are all part of this strict ideological group, and they're infecting people with this radical gender ideology, is literally what, like, these unhinged right-wingers are saying. But it does kind of seem like Jenk is just kind of in that camp of, like, oh, if you're trans, you must, by definition, be, like, some sort of radical leftist. You know, clearly, like not connecting the dots about people like Caitlyn Jenner or Blair White existing. Which, honestly, was just really, really frustrating to have in that conversation. Because the people that are in my circle of friends are people who, like, literally have been homeless in their lives, and people who literally are making, like, ridiculous amounts of money. I have a pretty broad circle. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Anderson, for the five gifted memberships. Deeply appreciate your support of the show. Thank you so much. You know... It's something that kind of happens sometimes when you're like a polyamorous trans woman that's like a little bit popular on the internet. It turns out that you can build a pretty wide circle of people from like different perspectives and backgrounds and stuff. I know, what a shocker. But then there's the other part that was like even more disturbing, which was I pointed out something that Anna had said on the air, where I was like, hey, Anna said this bit about doctors giving hormone therapy to children because they were afraid of being called transphobic. And I was very clear. I was like, you know that's not happening, that's right? Not, like, you know not, that that yeah. isn't happening. And Jenk's response was, you know, I don't know. See, I could see it happening, though. And I'm like, no, but you couldn't because you know if that actually did happen, that would be medical malpractice and it would be like a federal case to just give kids hormone replacement therapy because you didn't want to seem transphobic. That's ridiculous. On its face is ridiculous. Anybody who knows anything about politics would know that not only would that be a federal case, but it would be like national headlines. Every single newspaper would turn that into the biggest story for months. I mean, literally, the biggest story transphobes have had for the past two months is Dylan Mulvaney being on a can of Budweiser. 
So do you think that they really wouldn't make it national headlines if even if it just happened once? But no, Jenks still doubled down. It's like, I don't know. I could see that happening. And it's like, great. Dude, come the fuck on. But again, I you you guys know that Jank is the person who I think the lowest of of all of TYT, so. Here's somebody who is like the head of a news network who is like basing political opinions off of things that he could see happening. Like, what a wonderful position to be in at this point. And again, what a terrible situation for Benny to be in. Like, she's got to deal with so much. To have to like, like, the network that you're a part of the leader of that network and like you're doing your absolute best you're going out of your way to be as to 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 be as informative and helpful as possible in the midst of an unprecedented attack on your general identity group on completely fabricated grounds and the best that you can get is just somebody sort of shrugging their shoulders and going i don't know you for, you you guys seem like you're the type that would intimidate a doctor that's fucked up Point. Like the real brilliant five head political so take fucking right embarrassing. there. You know, I could imagine this scenario, and that really says something about society, doesn't it? <laughs> and that had to be one of the most unhinged parts of that phone call. But whatever. I sent him some research papers about trans people in sports that went into detail pretty clearly about, like, hey, there's no evidence that there's any reason to discriminate against trans people in sports. And that was like the conclusion that it came to pretty firmly, right? Hey, there's no evidence that y we should discriminate against trans people. What a, what a wild concept. It's amazing. Isn't this just the 90s to 2000s? The gays have gone too far after gay marriage because libs pushed back against that back then too? Yeah, it's the same shit. Of course it's the same shit. History is just repeating itself. They're literally carting out the same old arguments that they do every time. Because as it turns out, those arguments appeal to people who are acting out of spite and hatred and distrust and fear very well. Those arguments only th those arguments work when you've turned off your rational brain or when you want to get people to turn off their rational brain which they're doing these arguments are designed to act on prejudice i know uh but jenk apparently has learned the wrong lesson from that especially when you look at some of the clips from his most recent rant about trans people that he just did the other day regarding trans people in sports and the extreme radical activists that support trans people in sports. Now, let's listen really quick to some of the clips from this rant to see oh, where boy, exactly Jenk is on these issues. No, you, the puberty block, I'm sorry, the hormone blockers do lower the testosterone, they do even things out a lot, right? But the men still have other physical advantages, mm -hmm. like we maintain mass much better. Mm -hmm. And to give you a sense of how unfair this is, that where she won in Canada with 275 yeah. so pound is, bench press. Uh huh. Uh huh. I bench press 275. Okay, and that's that's not a big deal for a guy. This is so ridiculous. This is literally so ridiculous. Okay, think about that. He's like, oh, this trans woman won a competition where she broke a record. He's, he's, he's so, he doesn't even get it. He doesn't even fucking understand that his own argument is proving him wrong. That the trans woman who's on hormone therapy can only weight lift as good as he, a stupid fat ass who sits in a fucking air conditioned room on a studio set can bench press. And she's a professional weightlifter on hormones. He doesn't even get that he's making the opposite of his argument. Bench pressing 275 pounds. And clearly, that's unfair. Because I, a cisgender man, can easily bench press 275 pounds. Therefore, there must be an advantage. And it's like, my guy, she literally broke a record. Like, what are you talking about? She clearly wasn't having like an incredible- The current record for a cis woman is 605 pounds bench pressed. Cenk, you gotta go a long way to go, my man easy time you're stumbling so close to the point like jenk is literally incapable in this moment of separating trans women from cisgender men in his own brain right here like he is fundamentally refusing. man tyt is just they're just so stupid
there there's I, I i it's just so dumb this was like the thing this was like the segment we reacted to about ukraine where they were just all over the place in their conclusions Using to connect the dots that hormones maybe actually have an impact on, I know this is wild, your ability to maintain mass. That maybe perhaps, like... Gas leak theory confirmed. You know, honestly, I'm starting to get closer to the gas leak theory every single day. That there's just like, maybe, maybe there's just going to be a, a revelation that they like built their studio on top of like a natural gas reserve and it's been leaking up through the floor slowly make like how do you how do you make the argument that goes to the opposite of the point and laugh about it like that so confidently oh this lady this trans lady lifted on 275 pounds that's what i lift and i don't work out at all she's on hor She's a professional weightlifter on hormones. You are on test. You have testosterone in your body. What? Do you not understand? You're making the opposite. Oh God, it's just, I can't. I can't do it. Ignar Husky, thank you so much for the $10. That sounds awesome. Thank you so much. Your biological traits are not dictated by some ethereal assignment of gender that you were given at birth. And maybe Can we please watch the Tim Pool thing? We're getting there. We're going to get to the Tim Pool thing. We're going to finish this video and then we're doing the Tim Pool thing. I promise. Apps are actually we dictated need, by. I need Emma Vigland. And I haven't streamed in a couple days, so I'm going to try and push through. We're going to get there. Let's go. The hormones that are like flowing through your body, telling your body what to do. Like, could he use. Could he have used a sillier example? He's trying to say that trans women have an advantage in sports because he personally is a cisgender man that is never- I promise I'll try my best, okay? I mean it. I'm really gonna try. Let's go. Ever taken estrogen would be able to beat them all at a bench press competition. This is just on its face ridiculous. But just wait, because it's gonna get worse. I mean, it's okay, but it's not that big a deal. You're gonna put that in the women's division. I don't care how many hormone blo blockers you had. It's gonna make a difference, okay? And in the limited cases, they're not like instantly breaking every record like Trump is saying, right? But that's not true, by the way. It's just not true, especially for weightlifting. Weightlifting is one of the ones that has been most studied. The only sport where, uh, where like residual bone mass has even shown any bonus is in like rowing. Nobody's fucking talking about professional rowing. In the studies of weightlifting, hormones affect you the most. They affect you the most in weightlifting. So basically, your advantage gets obliterated. Any advantage that testosterone gives you gets obliterated by going on hormones in weightlifting, completely destroyed. But they're doing better than the average bear. That's not true. Like, literally show me any statistic that shows that trans women are performing better than average in sports. In fact, that's part of the research that I showed Jenk that it actually isn't happening. It literally is not happening. There is yet to be a trans woman win at the Olympics, despite the fact that trans women have been allowed at the Olympics for a long time now. Once again, it is almost like Jenk is refusing to take in the information that people are presenting to him and is just making up things in his head and taking that as reality. And and here, I'll add one thing that's really important. Thank you. And uh, we shot a show, I don't know if you guys are ever gonna see it, we shot a pilot just this weekend with a mixed uh, Republican and Democratic family, okay? We asked, I asked him about trans rights, should they have the same rights, same exact rights in housing, employment, etc. Every one of them, including hardcore Trump people were like, yes, they should have the same yeah, exact yeah, rights. Yeah, exactly. When I asked about this topic, Every one of them, except one of six out of seven, were like, no, not competing in sports. Doesn't make sense. Men and women are different, okay? And so whether that's, you know, we can get into the- Yeah, super Trumpists, super noted for being really scientifically intelligent, for being super up to date on actual data and science. Idiot. Continue that scientific debate. But as far as the American people go and politics go, you're gonna lose them. Whether it's right or wrong, it doesn't matter. You're gonna lose them. Oh, yeah, that's right. We should. Uh, uh Killjoy points out that statistically, trans sports uh, st statistics show that trans people tend to place well below the top three.
and the loudest voices in anti-trans sport, sports are people who place well below the top three. It's literally just women who are mad they weren't able to cut it, and they wouldn't have. And so the Grifton said, "Yeah, they wouldn't have been able to cut it against their against against cis women competitors either. It's completely stupid. It's a completely fabricated, invented thing. All evidence." Uh, all studies that, that are on trans sports show that the the advantage uh, uh, of being born male is negligent. It's negligible. It's nothing. There's like one sport that's been barely studied, and that's rowing, and there's some advantage that that nobody has even fully done, and that's rowing. Every other sport that's been heavily studied, it doesn't fucking make a difference statistically. They're just inventing an issue because they can get, again, because it plays on prejudice. Adjust all of our- Yes, exactly, yes. Gayfesh, Gayfesh says, remember when they framed a trans woman coming in 6,000th out of 12,000 women in a marathon of beating 6,000 women in a marathon? I remember that. That was one of the best examples of a completely misleading headline. Um, where they were like, trans woman destroys 6,000 cis women in race out of 12,000. She didn't even place in the top half. Complete, complete insanity. Political opinions based off of what's popular and what's unpopular, right? Because here's the thing, Jenk. You personally, as somebody that works in the news, have a responsibility. You have a responsibility to actually inform people with the facts and not worry about like, oh, how are they gonna worry about like what I'm saying? No, you just have to like give people the facts. And that as somebody who is working in media, you do actually have an influence over people's opinions. But it's playing this game of, oh, I want to sound and seem really smart, regardless as to whether or not something is actually true. And so I'm going to say something that's not true, uh, just because it's a big smart brain thing to say. You know, I think discriminating against trans people is okay as a, a smart galaxy brain strategic move, because we got to win over all of these people who, who just don't understand yet. Like, can we stop doing this? Can we stop playing this game of like, I really want to look smart, so I'm afraid of saying something that is literally true? Or like, standing up for what is just morally correct? I mean, quite literally, if you don't have enough evidence, why do you think you sh the default should be discrimination? Explain this. Expl why is the default discrimination? And heaven forbid we stand up for people and say, no, trans people should just be allowed to play in sports. That's good, actually. That's fine. There's no Robo Blue says, why is heteronormativity so homoerotic? Because, and I know that you're joking a little bit there, but the truth is, is that heteronormativity is also super patriarchal. Heteronormativity is, 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 is male supremacist. Heteronormativity as a construct unironically believes that women are inferior to men and that men should be put above women. And so it does end up having this weird homoeroticism to it, but they never admit that and they won't call it what it is. It's just a passive thing. It's very fucking weird. No evidence suggests that we should discriminate against trans people because of didn't Chank just literally make the argument that trans people aren't their actual gender with the men and women are different comment? Yeah, he did passively by saying, no, men and women are different, you know? That's just saying you don't believe that trans women are women. He just didn't say it outright. He said it in a roundabout way. So yeah, he did make that claim. Some sort of biological advantage because of course, that's like a silly nonsensical idea. <laughs> and also, wild concept, women with PCOS have a ton of advantages in sports. Are we gonna discriminate against them too? Right? True! Once again, this is a failure to understand that trans people are just a type of person, right? This is thinking that transness is something extra, which is another vibe that I got with Jank over the phone, was just this feeling that it seemed like he thought that transitioning and being trans was like this extra special thing that people did for fun or to make a political statement, and not just literally part of like who trans people are. Once again, this is just a failure to understand transness as just a type of person that exists. And the idea of, oh, you're just losing the average person, you're losing, I could win over Republicans on like the housing and the, all these other things, is just absurd on its face. Because are, really, Jank, are people just going to vote for a Republican because they're very angry that they yeah, I can win over uh, I can win over the Republicans on equal rights, except for not actually equal rights, because we'll still allow them to be discriminated against in sports, and we'll also still allow them to be discriminated against in medicine. But you know, 
we can get a conservative wow you can get a conservative to say that they actually believe in freedom for everybody when they're put on the spot and they know that if they say no that it'll sound like they're like if they go no i don't want equality for trans people they are conservatives never <laughs> Some of them say it outright, but most of them put that little mask on and go, oh yeah, I want everybody to be equal. I don't see race. I don't see gender. I don't, I'm, 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 I'm colorblind, yo. And then they go, Excel, you know, but in sports and in, you know, in medicine, we don't want to trust the doctors. We don't want to trust the science. Yep. There's a trans person playing sports ball. Come on, like get, be real. Be real. Especially yeah, and of course, yes, as Skull Muncher so correctly brings up, uh, let us recall what I stated in the last time that we had to talk about this. Jenk couldn't even fucking come close to winning a local election. When it comes to knowing what the uh, what the what the the populace wants, when it comes to being able to successfully sell a message, Jenk has a lot of other problems standing in the way. Part of the reason being that Jenk is an unlikable, loud, annoying, uh, 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 arrogant piece of shit who is constantly wrong about everything and often literally disproves his own argument by putting his own foot in his mouth. So you know, maybe maybe just uh, maybe just take a step back, man. Maybe we don't really need you to be. The the uh, warrior uh, 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 of uh, the warrior that's winning over the uh, the right. Actually, because and this is another thing that I pointed out to Jenk. If you look at the states where Republicans made their entire campaign just attacking trans people in sports, you know what happened when Democrats actually stood in defense of trans people? Oh yeah, that's right. The Republicans lost miserably. Nobody is thinking about this. People are not like just like true. like Fucking struggling true. to fall asleep at night. Oh my god. Oh, I can't even believe it. trans people are playing sports. What am, what am I gonna do? Nobody's doing that. They, like there's like, a tiny group of people who are obsessed with trans people that are like going on a tirade. But that's not the majority if you look at michigan in michigan the republicans made their entire campaign just like we oh paisa thank you so much for the ten dollars just dropping my periodic thanks satan for demon mama thank you for supporting the show hate trans people and what happened now oh the democrats have a trifecta in michigan now and every state where republicans have tried to focus on just attacking trans people, it has literally undermined their own support. So what is happening right here seems to be very clearly Jenk hiding behind hypothetical people's opinions in order to mask his own opinion. He doesn't think that trans people should be allowed to play professional sports. And instead of just saying that, which I guess on some level he does, he hides behind, oh, you know, the American people aren't ready for trans people to play sports, you know? But it gets even worse because he basically follows this up by blaming trans athletes and anybody who dares to just support trans people existing for all of the transphobic legislation that is passing across the country and for Republicans winning. That is incredibly selfish of activists who are betraying their own community. Because when you say I don't care about elections, who cares about the Democrats? That isn't the point. The Republicans introduced over 600 bills against the LGBTQ community. That's because of elections and over 70 of them have already passed. When you say I don't care about winning and I don't care about elections, what you're saying is I'm super selfish leftist activist and I'd like to build my cloud. But meanwhile, I'm willing to throw trans people and the entire LGBTQ community under the bus knowing that these bills are gonna pass because we're laser focused on a losing issue. And he's like, oh, if Republicans win, because- Trans rights are a losing issue, so give up your rights so that so that the Democrat, that's nonsense. That is a nonsensical, incoherent argument. He's just yelling and bloviating as usual. The trans people wanna play sports, it'll be all your fault. And like, how disgusting is that actually? You are genuinely gonna blame people whose existence- Melkor in the void, my humble tithe and thanks for all your work in the face of all things on fire, rule number one is more important than ever. Yes, for those of you who are watching, first of all, thank you for supporting me. But secondly, we've been covering a lot of uh, really deranged anti-trans shit and it gets pretty depressing. Just remember rule number one of the Demon Mama community, the most important rule, do not fucking die. We fight till the very end. Is like actively being criminalized by Republicans for their own oppression. Like get like give me a break. This is actually your fault more than it is 
any trans person's fault, Jenk, personally you. It is more his fault. Because what Jenk is doing is yeah, Jenk exactly. If you spend your time on your platform demonizing trans people, trans activists with vague terms, instead of actually convincing people to support trans people, you are just giving up the play field. You are just surrendering to the right and being a spineless loser. Tristar, thank you so very much for the 1332. Thank you very, very much for supporting the show. It means the world to me is going to an audience of people who are presumably on the left and telling them no it's okay to be transphobic it's okay to compromise with the rights of trans people it's okay to say that we should just discriminate against trans people in some ways if it makes these republicans happy and like that is unbelievably disgusting it's such a shameless thing to do like how on god's green earth do you think that you get to call yourself some sort of like principled leftist who's out to do the right thing? How can you call yourself the home of progressives when you are actively cutting oh, deals yeah. with that? That's their fucking byline of their show. <laughs> the home of progressives. <laughs> oh man. Co oh, how did I blank on that one? I'm politically homeless. I, I don't I just don't understand the left. My show's just the home for progressives and the home for the left on the internet, but you know, I'm just politically homeless now. Oh come the fuck on. Come the fuck on. About the rights of trans people. Thank you very much for the raid. President Sunday, welcome to all of the President Sunday viewers. We are deep in the muck with the TYT nonsense. But we're in it together. Thanks for being here. People and then spreading transphobic nonsense to an audience of like millions of people it is deeply irresponsible and fundamentally it's pathetic this is genuinely embarrassing the degree to which this is irresponsible just knows no bounds because there are so many people that are literally looking to people like jenk for opinions and he's literally just giving them an open invitation to be as transphobic as they want to be because it's politically strategic they'll say that but okay you don't care about the politics let's just for once in your life, think strategically about what that means. That means that you're gonna continue pushing the Democratic Party to unequivocally support everything that the trans activists want, even if it's unpopular among the electorate. Huh? Apply this to any other discriminated against minority group. You fucking coward. You fucking pathetic coward. That means they're not getting reelected. That means they're gonna to lose to Republicans. Republican lawmakers it's who- It's your fucking job to make the electorate educated on the issues, you idiots. It's not your job to spend all your time getting mad because somebody disagreed with you on Twitter. It's your job to educate the electorate so that trans activists can successfully win rights for trans people. Ostensibly, as a progressive, that should be your goal. Sorry, that just fucking, just, that, that just fucking, that was a, what the fuck? Fuck these people. Fuck these people. Holy shit. Passing draconian, disgusting legislation in various states right now as we speak against the transgender community. Look at this. You're going to push your Democratic Party to unequivocally support everything the trans activists want. Like, shut up. Literally, shut the fuck up. This is so embarrassing. Like, Anna Kasparian. And, like, I, look, I'm going to be real. This is my personal opinion, but whatever. I think Anna Kasparian is genuinely personally transphobic. I'm just going to say it right now. She's like saying and doing all of the things. She's referring to every trans person as a trans rights activist. Re referencing we saw that live today. By the way, we saw that live. She called a random trans shit poster that she was arguing with a trans activist. She literally uses it like a, like it's, it's, it's that silencer meme. You know, where it's like the slur on the gun and then the silencer is trans activist. And it's the T slur on the gun. Just want to be friendly to the YouTubes, you know. She literally did that today. We just talked about that five seconds ago. She also misgendered Benny on stream before catching herself today. For real? Oh, wait, that's this clip. That's this clip, isn't it? Doesn't Benny works with their show? They definitely know her pronouns. So unfortunately, Benny has decided to leave TYT. I am definitely heartbroken over his de her decision to do that. I so
Remember what I said about the spite fueled thing? Remember, remember what I said about the spite fueled thing? You, do you guys, you really think that was a whoopsie? Benny works for their company. Worked for Anna's company for over a year. Had direct conversations with both of them. Eh, I don't know. If I had the sus sound effect, boom, 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 boom. If my soundboard wasn't broken, I'd be hitting it right now. Let's continue. Every trans person is a trans rights activist is just on its face, literally transphobic. And it's one of the things that transphobes have been pushing. Also, apparently two other LGBTQ staff members have left TYT. I didn't know that. That's wild. So that's three now? For a long time, is just calling every trans person a trans rights activist. I mean, and the media more broadly does this as well. And this whole idea of like, you're gonna lose the Republicans, you're gonna lose the Republicans if you cater to these trans people, once again, is entirely debunked. Most people are fine yeah. with trans people, and when Republicans make their entire platform about attacking trans people, it actually does undermine their political success. We just live in a country that is very much not a democracy, that has all this gerrymandering and all these other things, and so Republicans still have like seats in a lot of places. I know, wild concept. But genuinely, if you look at their poll numbers in response to them focusing on just trans people existing, it's not working. It is genuinely not working for them, it is undermining the electoral success. But of course, you can't not take the opportunity to blame trans people for their own oppression, am I right? It's really great that Anna Kasparian is doing this. And by the way, you schmucks, you're falling exactly into the right wing trap. The Republicans, they tried everything. They tried anti-gay stuff, it didn't work. They tried trans bathrooms, you remember that? Mm -hmm. That didn't work. Trans, kicking the transgender community out of the military, that didn't work. They drilled and drilled and drilled in until they finally found a little tiny nugget. Wait, kicking them out of the military did work. It got undone once Biden took office. And you right now are, are countering your own argument. You fucking bloviating idiot, as always, literally shoving your fucking giant boot in your giant ass mouth. Again, this should show you that their culture war issues don't matter, that you should fight for what's right and not worry about what the boo-hoo whittle GOP Trump MAGA heads feel about trans sports. It should be pretty obvious by your own fucking argument. But again, I actually don't think that Cenk has like two brain cells to rub together. I actually think he's experiencing some kind of mental catastrophic failure where he just gets mad at thing and then says, Jig mad and yells about it, but doesn't actually think about where he's going with it. Because how can you say all of these things and then come to the conclusion that you should back off on the issue because of the rights meaningless complaints? How do you go on a rant about how they don't win on these issues and then say, well, we should grant, we should cede ground on these issues. What the fuck? Yeah. Of like, hey, trans folks in like competitive sports seems a little bit much. And you don't engage them in that fight. They lose on everything else. But idiot activists, yes, I just called you an idiot. Activists go in there and go, no. I'm this is literally him blaming trans people for their own genocide. He's, he's going off on a tear here saying that trans people who he is even saying is are correct here. In this argument, he's saying they're correct, but that they just won't give up the fight. What a fucking moron, okay? Just, if there's one takeaway in all of this, <laughs> it's uh, unironically that Cenk is a fucking idiot. Actually can't compute his own arguments. To be fair, Jank has a really bad track record with genocide. I'm gonna fall right into that trap and I'm gonna fight on the only losing ground we have so we can elect more Republicans so they can pay, pass more anti-LGBT. It's not losing ground, they're wrong, they're lying. The, the Republicans are lying about the science, they are lying, you Fucking idiots are supposed to educate people that they're fucking lying. 
but you can't do your job because you're compromised. Because you motherfuckers have lost the plot. You've let the money seep into your brains. You've gotten comfortable in your little studio and you've forgotten what you supposedly believed in. Oh, oh my God, I these motherfuckers. E.T. laws. Great, well played. I'm sure you're- To be fair, he also has a bad track record with effectively campaigning. True, but I've pointed that out many times. Clout and your brand is doing great. The, the, these clips are just so infuriating, genuinely. Like, that talk about betrayal is just so, like, pathetic and embarrassing and shameless. Coming from Jenk and Anna right here. Like, oh, you're betraying the trans community by fighting for trans rights. How dare you just say that trans people should be treated equally in society? Don't you know that you're supposed to live as second-class citizens so that I can feel better about myself when I give you rights? Literally spare me. This is ridiculous. But I think the real icing on the cake here is this tweet where Anna Kasparian has decided to unilaterally declare Jesse Singal to not be a transphobe, despite, and this is what's really wild, Jesse Singal just want they they just want to suppress anything that questions the safety of puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones for minors. Oh man, we went over Singal this earlier. literally talking to whistleblowers at a medical facility that <laughs> appear to have made some significant HIPAA violations about their ah, patients yes. in sharing the information that they did with Jesse Singal. And, of course, you have him running around spewing all of the same train. When was the last time Cenk actually did any activism? He mostly sits? Transphobic nonsense that basically your average transphobe is gonna be spreading. You know, the types of things about like, oh, we don't know about hormones and oh, HRT for kids and oh my god, it's so terrifying. Oh my goodness, they're turning all of our kids transgender. Oh my god. Every single is yeah. a good faith, I think, critical thinker. I, 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 I'm subscribed to Blocked and Reported. I have listened to endless podcast episodes uh, from Blocked and Reported. I haven't seen anything from Jesse Single that communicates to me that he is a transphobe, that he is a bad person. He did straight news reporting on basically what, you know, some of the risks could be when it comes to transitioning literal kids uh, with puberty blockers and then cross-sex hormones. And through his reporting, which I'm very sad to say I didn't really come across until this year, I learned that I was wrong about a bunch of other things. Like, Jesse Singal literally is one of the, like, more notable transphobic people that is out there putting out misinformation about trans people and actively stoking the flames of this big wave of anti-trans legislation. And, and it's just deeply shameless to come in and say, no, I definitely think, as a cisgender woman, think that, that uh, Jesse Singal is, is, is not transphobic at, at all, at all. So, yeah, it's good. It's fine. Trust me. Trust me. And then, of course, she starts talking about, like, oh, puberty blo blockers and cross-sex hormones for children. I think the important thing to understand here, and this is a line that I have, like, continuously told people and, like, said on TYT myself, that, like, really what it boils down to is hormone replacement therapy is literally just puberty. Like, at the end of the day, it's just puberty. And yeah, whether it's puberty with estrogen or testosterone, it's gonna carry some risks just like it does with cisgender children. That's just part of of puberty and it's actually not all that different if it's a trans puberty or a cis puberty believe it or not and so anybody fear mongering about the effects are permanent the effects are permanent yeah that's kind of the whole point isn't it you know isn't that like the whole point but yeah it literally yes normal fucking puberty is is permanent that's the reason why whatever they don't care they don't care if the effects were really entirely permanent then transitioning as an adult wouldn't really work, would it? And yet, of course, it does. And you know, it's funny because their biggest fear for what happens to children who are in hormone therapy is that a cisgender child might accidentally get gender dysphoria. You know, the thing that trans children just deal with if they're not allowed to get hormones. And so literally, this is just a nonsense argument of throwing all trans people under a bus out of the yep. hypothetical fear yes, that a cisgender person might take hormones and just realize that it's not for them. Which at that point, by the way, they could just stop taking hormones. And so really when you take all this together, it seems like Anna Kasparian is fully engulfed into like the conspiracy theories against trans people. And I, I genuinely think that she believes a lot more than what she's saying. Because I've just seen hints of like just some like extremely rabid transphobic nonsense.
And with Jenk, Jenk seems to be following Anna Kasparian along and kind of seems to be of the vibe of like, oh, no, I'm this big smart news guy and I've been doing this for a long time. I couldn't possibly be wrong and very much relying on his lack of any type of understanding of biology and just making ridiculous assumptions about the difference between men and women and thinking that that's some sort of like universally applicable thing not thinking about how hormones play a role in that, and of course is bouncing off of Anna's deeply transphobic energy. And of course, he can't help himself but frame himself as like the brilliant galaxy brain reasonable person. And of course, all these trans people are just ridiculous and out there and just radical. And couldn't possibly be, you know, referencing like very basic science that is easy to go through. And any attempts to educate either Anna Kasparian or Jenk has kind of just been met with a lot of stubbornness, of digging in their heels, yep. rejecting- Boy, oh boy, haven't we seen that. Boy, haven't the we new seen information that. And replacing it with their own imaginations about how they think things should be. And it, it just continues to escalate over the past several months. And that fundamentally is why I just can't be a part of TYT anymore. It's just too much. It's ridiculous. Because at a certain point, it becomes embarrassing for me. Because how can I, as a trans person who actually knows the science behind this, who actually is like, actively trying to support trans people as somebody that people based. look up to me right people based literally like send me messages based and spine pill benny has more of a spine than anna kasparian's entire lineage okay to me like i'm so inspired you know you being a tyt like it, it made me want to come out or like my kids watch your show and and you know it, it just like it gives them so much hope and they're so excited to see a trans person in the news and i have to deal with messages from them now asking about hey what's going on with tit hey what the hell is happening here like why is it yeah you want to talk about somebody who's taking a financial hit remember earlier today when we were just a just a just a few short bits ago when we were listening to anna kasparian go yeah guys i'm gonna take such a financial hit from pandering to the right which i regularly acknowledge makes tons of money for saying bullshit oh you want to see what it actually looks like to take a financial hit talk about giving up a juicy job at tyt because you're taking a stance on an issue you care about S spine pilled based and spine pilled this why is jenk saying this and that is just like the amount of like psychic damage that i have to take every single day dealing with not only the transphobic nonsense of the republicans but also whatever jenk and ann are on right now it's just too much and i just because at a certain point it becomes embarrassing because then people think that i'm like endorsing their views and i cannot i will not i refuse to lend any support to Good. those views whatsoever. Because fundamentally, they're dangerous, and they're ridiculous, and like, they're straight up evil. It is just this shameless, selfish ignorance that is fueling this, and just this self-importance coming from both Jenk and Anna, this idea that they don't actually have to listen. So no, yeah, I'm done with TYT, because I can't let anybody think that I have any type of support for their opinions here because they're just ridiculous. And it's just gotten to be too much for me to deal with all of this nonsense. And the last thing I want is for them to be able to say, oh no, it's fine. We have like a transgender host, so it's all good actually. Because no, it's not all good actually. It is in fact quite bad. Damn. Based in spine pill. All right, everybody. It's time that we wrap up this many hours long segment reacting to the extended pathetic saga of Anna Kasparian. All of you, I'm gonna link Benny's uh, channel here. Uh, uh, I'm gonna link Benny's channel. There we go. There we go. Boop, boop, boop. Go check out Benny. Um, and uh, that's really cool. Uh, Let's see, what do I have to say in summary? In summary, Well, first of all, if you enjoyed this coverage, make sure that you're subscribed to Demon Mama, smack that subscribe button and ring the bell below. And please leave me your thoughts on the in the comments. I wanna know, are you a former fan of TYT? Are you angry at TYT? Do you think I got something wrong? Please tell me in the comments below. Uh, not only will you be helping the video, but I, li I love to read your opinions. And as many of my fans will tell you, I'm very responsive in the comments. Uh, so go ahead and do that. Uh, finally, let's do a quick summary. Uh, TYT are a bunch of loud, bloviating, greedy losers. Um, who uh, have spent the last 
10 years saying that they're the home of progressivism on the left, that they're pushing things to the left, building a left project, and now when they see that they can make some money, uh, they're grifting uh, by swinging to the right and pretending, what happened? Even though ostensibly as a massively popular uh, 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 platform on the left, they built a part, they built the left at least a big chunk of it to this day. So I find it very odd, very silly. And I'm gonna end this with a little call of action. To all of you out there in my audience who are fans or former fans of TYT, right now, in my opinion, is the perfect time to go in and find all those clips of Anna Kasparian uh, and Jenk admitting that there's tons of money uh, uh, to be made in the right and put that right next to Anna Kasparian on Adam and Sitch's show saying I'm gonna take a hit There's no money to be made pitching to the right and then just play it right just make those videos upload those to social media That's my call to action. This is your opportunity to really uh, You know put the pressure on them you guys are the ones who've been I'm not a fan of TYT I haven't been a fan of TYT uh ever really, uh, maybe a little bit at one point. Uh, I've always liked, I, until very until very recently, I have liked Anna Kasparian's work, although we've had some disagreements on certain issues. I've always generally respected her, although her last few uh, issues on social media and the way that she uses her platform, obviously I don't approve of, and I think they're pretty crap and embarrassing. But you all who've been supporting the show, you guys have a right to hold these motherfuckers to task. You built their platform. You got to call them to task, okay? Be cool about it. Don't be an asshole. But come on. Hold your content creators to task. They, they got a huge platform off of your donation bucks, off of your views. Don't let them get away with this fucking grifting, manipulative crap. Because, come on, what we saw today was Anna Kasparian just lying straight to everyone's face over and over again, completely misrepresenting people, criticizing her, completely misrepresenting her own intentions, even misrepresenting her own behavior. And you guys all know it, okay? You guys all fucking know it. That's all I have to say. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all very soon.